Hello ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to the uh, SQL Server failover clustering uh, session. During the last session we looked at some of the cluster fundamentals and how the failover process works in a cluster followed by uh, some of the uh, Windows 2008 enhancements related to failover clustering as well as uh, SQL Server 2008 enhancements that utilize the, uh, the Windows uh, features as well as uh, SQL Server's own native features uh, for making these uh, clusters uh, highly available and robust. Um, we also looked at some of the uh, the SQL Server account considerations. We looked at the uh, the SID concept, the security identifiers, and we looked at some of the best practices for uh, clustering uh, service uh, accounts. We are now going to look at uh, the SQL Server 2008 uh, failover cluster setup operations. So, um, as we uh, discussed during the last session, there are two um, different ways of installing SQL Server 2008. Now, this is different from SQL Server 2005. Um, there is no remote unattended installation um, in uh, SQL Server 2008. You need to install manually or using any uh, tools available for you. You need to install SQL Server. Um, you need to run the setup individually on each node uh, of the cluster uh, to be able to install uh, SQL Server in a failover clustering mode. Now, these two options um, are, that are available one is called, as you see on the slide, uh, Integrate Install, which is um, you install a single node SQL Server cluster. So you install all the local machine bits on a single node, followed by uh, running Add Node, again running the setup and running Add Node uh, from each of the other nodes um, of the cluster to uh, form a, a full cluster. Uh, the other option, by the way, the integrated install is the most commonly used uh, way of installing SQL Server 2008. There is another way, um, another option available called advanced or enterprise install where you go, um, you first prepare each of the nodes individually then followed by a complete phase um, which actually uh, in uh, prepares the cluster and make it uh, ready and available for you. We'll look into the advanced uh, uh, in a bit. Let's go with the in integrated install. Um, let me show you a little more details on that. Let me go to the next slide. Bear with me here. All right. So here, let's assume that we have a four-node um, cluster. Let's say. Uh, we already installed Windows uh, failover cluster on this. We already configured Windows 2008 uh, failover cluster. We are not going to go into those details. Uh, we are starting with the SQL Server uh, 2008 clustering. Um, so the first step as part of the SQL Server 2008 cluster install is to install, run the setup on one of the nodes. It doesn't matter which node you're going to use, but one of the nodes. Ideally, you want to uh, use the node that you are going to make the primary owner for this SQL instance, uh, but it doesn't matter. So you um, install the uh, single node cluster install running the setup uh, on that node. And then you perform add node action. So you again run setup on each of the remaining nodes uh, by running an add node. We'll look at that those options uh, in a bit when I show you the demo. Um, so you keep on uh, running the add node on each of the nodes at the end of which uh, you now have um, a full four node uh, SQL Server 2008 failover cluster. So that is the um, the procedure. So let's uh, take a look at the demo uh, to um, to look at the cluster install and as well as uh, the the procedure for m making a cluster uh, cluster phase SQL Server 2008 install. I have here on my laptop uh, a two node cluster. Um, let me open that up. Okay. Let me log log into this one. Oops. Okay. I just want to. All right. So this is a two-node um, Windows 2008 cluster. 
um, so the node 1 this is called Windows 2K node 1 and this is Windows 2K node 2 as you see here I have two cluster groups SQL 2K8 I1 and uh, SQL 2K8 I2 SQL 2K8 I1 is a, an already existing cluster I already installed uh, one so there is already one instance of SQL Server 2008 on this uh, two node cluster um, so 2K8 I1 has the um, the SQL Server here, uh, the name SQL 2K8 I1 uh, with one cluster disk and these are the SQL Server resources uh, pretty similar to any other cluster you may have already seen. Now 2, 2K8 I2 is the one that I'm going to use. There is nothing as you see here there is um, um, only a cluster disk um, there, there's nothing else um, so this is the one we are going to use now to install our second instance of SQL Server 2008. Now I have the installation bits on Node 1. Um, I'm going to use Node 1 as my first node. It doesn't again doesn't matter which one you're going to use, but I'm going to go with um, uh, Node 1. Um, so I'm going to run setup. So these are my installation bits. And by the way, this is. Um, um, slipstreamed version of SQL Server 2008. We talked about slipstream briefly during our last session. So I have SQL Server 2008 with uh, Service Pack 1 um, built into this uh, uh, installation. So I don't have to install 2008 first and then install Service Pack and all that. So I have, I have everything slipstreamed here. Um, the procedure to do a slipstream is available on the internet. You can uh, uh, look for SQL Server 2008 slipstream and you can find how you can make a slipstreamed version of uh, uh, SQL Server 2008 with SP1. By the way, it is um, allowed, uh, the slipstreaming is allowed from um, starting from Service Pack 1 for SQL Server 2008. So I'm going to run the setup and being Windows 2008, I would like to run my setup as an administrator. Um, to avoid any problems. So I'm running the SQL Server 2008 setup and bear with me while it is trying to run this. Uh, like I said I'm running this so I have three virtual machines on this laptop um, along with other um, programs on my laptop. So it may be a little slow but we'll get there. So we'll go to the installation. So here um, you see multiple options um, so what we are going to, so as you see here, new SQL Server standalone installation or add features. Now that is for a standalone instance of SQL Server. So if you want to install a standalone instance or if you want to add features to an existing installation, use that option. The next option is SQL Server failover cluster installation. This is what we are going to use. So this is the first one we need to use as we are as we do integrate install. And on on the remaining nodes, this is the option. Add node is the one we are going to use on the second node. But uh, to start with, just to have a single node SQL Server cluster installation, we are going to click on this new SQL Server 2000. Uh, I'm sorry, new SQL Server failover cluster installation. Again, bear with me while it's trying to um, open the uh, the setup process. So while we're waiting for that, um, so node 1 is the one we are going to use. So uh, we are doing an integrated install. So we are going to um, uh, do a single node install. After the installation of the single node, we will have our SQL Server ready and accessible. Unlike the, uh, the second option we're going to see, the set second type of setup, the, uh, the uh, advanced or enterprise install, each node will not be available so the 2000 the SQL Server uh, failover cluster will not be available until you finish the prepare phase which is the second phase uh, where you prepare but during the first phase of um, I'm sorry uh, during the complete the, during the first phase of prepare each uh, you'll be installing serv SQL Server bits on each of the individual um, in nodes but the the nodes uh, the nodes will be available but SQL Server installation you'll not be able to access the SQL Server on each of those nodes 
you're just preparing by uh, installing the beds um, during the second phase or after the finish of the second phase which is the completion phase is when you can um, actually see the SQL Server instance and access the SQL Server instance but integrate install um, during the first phase itself um, I mean during the the first install after the first install you'll be able to access the SQL Server um, you may not have the the cluster the high availability but you'll have the SQL Server instance available for you um, after the first phase alright so it's right now it's running the um, the setup uh, support rules so it's look it's um, the install SQL Server install go through multiple checks um, you may know in 2005 we have the system configuration check and things like that similar to that SQL Server 2008 also go through multiple checks there are more checks then in 2005 uh, this is basically to avoid any problems um, during the setup to detect any problem before uh, you actually start the setup so as you see here everything is passed so um, it it looked at different things like uh, um, setup is running being running as an administrator uh, restart if there is any restart actions required before running the setup and all that so everything passed so we're going to say okay here now it's going to open another window um, and they, in that window that's the window where it's actually going to start the installation process and going to install um, the check do the system configuration check and other checks so let's wait for it to open Okay, while you're waiting for that to open, I just want to show you on this second node some of the um, options we talked about, the look alive, is alive um, options. The names have been changed in 2008, um, so I'll show you those options. Um, so these are now called policies. So if you see here, um, the under the advanced policies so these are the look alive and is alive the basic resource health check is look alive and the um, the through uh, through resource uh, health check is uh, um, is alive we'll get to that um, now that we have this window open uh, the, the window is um, done so I'm going to click on install so it's now going through the setup support files this is mandatory um, during every install you first want to uh, I mean, yes, it, it is going to install the setup support file during each and every uh, SQL Server setup. Um, so you need to uh, install those. Um, SQL is, setup is going to install those automatically for you. Uh, this is similar to in, in 2005. Okay, uh, so it's scheduling package installation, scanning and normalizing SQL Server registry key permissions. There you go. Please wait while SQL Server process starts. All right. Once again, bear with me. Um, while my laptop uh, is struggling to get this get this thing running. okay anyway so while we're waiting for that so going back to the second uh, node like I said this so this uh, the is alive this is the look alive and this is the is alive um, but the names have been changed you can change the uh, threshold uh, the interval at which the look alive and is alive should be running uh, but we recommend not to change those that by leave the default of five seconds for the look alive and uh, one minute for the uh, is alive um, 
and now the policies also the naming changed here if you look at the uh, um, the properties of uh, a sequence of a 2005 uh, cluster on a Windows 2003 um, you you see the name names are different here for example this is the if a resource fails um, you know how many times uh, the resource should be attempted to restart on the same node before it uh, decide to be failover. Now if you notice this, the default for a SQL Server resource is set to 1. This is different from Windows 2000, uh, SQL Server 2005 where it is set to 3. Um, so which means in 2005 a, resource, a SQL Server resource fails, it attempts to retry 3 times uh, on the same node before it uh, decides to fail over. Now we, um, uh, the development team, uh, uh, decided that that may may increase your um, failover time because if the resource failed once, uh, there's a pretty good reason that uh, uh, that it may fail again. There may be uh, you know something that's uh, wrong, so um, it may fail again even if you try three or four times restart so we decided to go with uh, one retry uh, to reduce the failover time um, but you can so as you see this disk is uh, changeable so you can um, modify it uh, you know based on your requirements if you want your SQL Server resource to be retried um, multiple times before it actually decides to failover um, you can uh, increase that all right. We are still trying to. We are waiting for the setup uh, process to start. Spare with me one moment. Okay. So we see some progress now. Um, as you notice here, while this um, support rule check is in progress. On the left uh, hand pane, you see this that it shows you what is the current um, window it is on and what is going to be the next. So, this is different from SQL Server 2005. You, unless you have installed SQL Server multiple times, you don't know what's the next screen going to be um, or what's the previous screen you came from. Um, so, here, but it's going to show you the path that you're going to follow. Um, what's the next screen is going to be? Not a big deal, but uh, it's good to know what's uh, your next screen is. What uh, the next window is going to be after you click next. Um, so that's uh, that's another welcoming uh, option. As you see here, if I click on show details, um, it's going through the uh, the support rules uh, and um, it's. Uh, it's going through a different uh, checks as you see here it's going through ATL um, check, unsupported SQL Server products check, cluster node etc etc. Now anything that passed is green and anything that's uh, warning is under yellow and which is not a critical um, so SQL Server will let you um, pass through the uh, setup even if there are warnings. For example, I have this MSDTC cluster warning. Um, bec that's because I haven't clustered MSDTC. Um, in 2008, um, unlike in SQL Server 2005 in a cluster, uh, MSDTC is not mandatory to be clustered. Um, you, you only want to cluster it if you are going to use uh, uh, MSDTC in, for your SQL Server application. Or you know, and even um, if you're planning to use MSTTC, you can cluster that, uh, but it's not mandatory, unlike in SQL Server 2005. So we can ignore that. Um, and there are some cluster verification warnings here. Uh, we'll take take a look at that in a bit. Now, cluster shared disk available check. Now that failed. Now that's not normal. So it's it's thinking that I don't have a shared disk available for this cluster. Each uh, um, clustered instance need to have at least one shared disk and you cannot share the same shared disk that are you that, that you're using for um, other uh, other cluster groups. So I think I do have, let me go check on this node. So this is the group I'm going to use I mentioned I told you and let me look and I should have one cluster disk yes I do have 
cluster disk 3 volume low okay but if you notice here this is available on node 2 and I'm trying to run the setup on node 1 so that's the reason so you need to have this shared disk available on the node that you're going to um, run the setup so let me fail it over let me open the, this one here so as you see here it's on node 2 so I'm going to uh, actually fail the entire group so move the service to another node so I'm going to this is the way to move the um, uh, resources or move the cluster groups from one node to another so I'm going to move it to node 1 as you see here it's going offline pending so it's being being brought offline on node 1 node 2 and moved on over to node 1 and as you see here it's an online pending okay so now I see the node um, the current owner for this cluster group is node 1 which is the node I'm using to start the setup good so let's read on the um, support rules checks again and passed passed it's good uh, I didn't anticipate this but it's good that you know we are able to do some kind of uh, um, demo on troubleshooting the setup um, which is somewhat uh, you know I didn't um, uh, plan for that but that's good okay we know that DTC not clustered warning cluster verification errors passed this time okay that um, cluster verification warnings okay uh, let's uh, yeah I think this because you know when the um, if, as we discussed before um, during the setup uh, the cluster validation report so SQL Server Windows 2008 has this new um, tool called cluster validation tool that's built into Windows 2008 um, that tool need to be run um, and uh, that that should have um, uh, suc the report should be s generated successfully without any errors warnings are okay but errors are not okay uh, only then you'll be able to cluster your um, Windows 2008 nodes now that prevent that eliminates the ne necessity of having that uh, uh, HCL uh, hardware compatibility list uh, uh, certification um, so I have some um, warnings in my cluster uh, verification um, report as you see here the, there are no errors the er cluster verification so these two entries are actually looking at my um, cluster um, uh, verification report cluster validation report uh, from the windows and I have some warnings in that report and that's why it is showing that as warning but it, it let me it should let me um, continue with the setup because they are, those are just warnings um, and no errors and I have some network binding order warnings that's uh, those are okay because I just have one uh, um, network um, on my um, VMs here and there are some Windows firewall warnings that are okay too uh, so it's still going through a um, few more checks so once all those checks are passed or completed with warnings uh, it should let us go through the next uh, step in the uh, process Right, just bear with me well maybe while we're waiting for this maybe it's a good time for me to show you that cluster validation report I was talking about uh, you can get it from here validate um, uh, not here just so it's a um, HTML based report this is the one view validation report so this report need to be run ran successfully at least once before you actually can configure a Windows cluster and uh, um, a SQL Server cluster based on that Windows cluster so it's trying to open the validation uh, report okay looks like all our checks are completed here oh, there are a few warnings and so that's why so now the next is uh, enabled if you do notice uh, before when I had that error about the cluster disk 
um, the next was uh, grayed out. I, I, I cannot proceed. Of course, there is a way to bypass that cluster validation report, which you don't want to do it. Um, I mean, unless it's um, unless you know what you're doing. But we strongly, strongly recommend to make sure that the cluster validation report uh, is successful. Um, you know, warnings are also not good, but one or two is okay, uh, depending upon what type of warning it is. Um, and if you are, if you know what uh, that warning uh, is going to do to you in the future, uh, but uh, you know you want to make sure that the cluster validation report is succeed. As you see on the right hand side here, this is a validation report, and almost everything is uh, green except for one warning on a software update levels. So maybe I don't have. A uh, the servers do not all have the same software updates. Okay, it looks like I'm missing some uh, uh, KB um, patches on one of the nodes. Well, you don't want to have that on a production cluster, but this is not a production cluster, so I'm okay. And that is the warning. So because this warning was there in the cluster validation report, um, this rules check on the left-hand side uh, showed a warning. All right. So we're okay with that. I'm going to minimize this uh, validation report. I'm going to continue, click next on this uh, setup window. Okay, it's asking me for the product key and all that. So I'm going to have already have the product key for this uh, uh, product. So I'm going to continue there. So if you have, uh, if you're installing on production, you want to make sure that you're providing a, a product key here um, for your SQL Server 2008 license. Okay, and um, you now we are going to go through each one of uh, these lines in the terms to make sure that we understand each and every term. All right? I'm just kidding. No, I'm going to just click on accept here. I don't want to because I know what's in there. But if you if you are installing it for the first time, you may want to continue through this uh, or you know, at least take a copy or print out of this license terms and go through it to make sure that you're, all, you're okay with that. But since I know everything in there, I'm going to click on I accept and click on next. Alright, so I'm in the feature selection right now. Let's wait until see. So the bold is now at the feature selection. So this is where we select all the different features that you want to install as part of your SQL Server 2000 install. Now you definitely want to install database engine services um, unless you're just installing the client tools or other components. So I'm going to click on database engine services and when you click on that if you notice the replication and full text search have been automatically selected. Now if I click on those everything will go away. That's because that's another difference in 2000 between 2005 and uh, 2008. Um, so in database in two, SQL Server 2008, by default, the replication and full text search will be installed when you're installing the engine. There is no way that you can um, under cluster that is. So there is no way you can uh, um, you can um, deselect or not to install those. Those will be installed automatically. All right. So if you want to install an analysis services or reporting services, you can um, select all those. These are all typical to your um, Web Windows uh, SQL Server 2005 uh, setup. There is nothing, not a big difference. Uh, business uh, bits and client tools and all that. Um, I have, if you notice here, these are all grayed out and already selected. That's because I already have one uh, uh, SQL Server uh, installation instance installed and uh, I have already installed the client tools as part of that so it is showing me that the client tools have been already installed. Alright, so I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to select any other things here for now but you can do that as you need. Um, so you click next. Alright, just uh, the, this, um, so from now onwards it's not going to take longer except for the last, at the end, for the actual installation, actual running the setup is going to take long, uh, but uh, during that setup we'll go back to our presentation and finish the uh, remaining slides while instead of waiting uh, here for the setup, um, because the setup itself um, will take long time, but 
we should be able to progress through all these different windows uh, pretty quick. So just please bear with me for one more second, a few more seconds. All right. So here, now we need to select uh, the network name, the cluster, the SQL Server network name. Now this is the name that we are going to use to connect to your SQL Server. This is your virtual instance name. Now uh, it also it, it shows already there is an instance um, of SQL Server installed here. Um, so we we are going to. Um, use another one and by the way this is the default instance uh, as you see the instance name is MS SQL Server which indicates that this is a default instance which means we'll not be able to install another um, default instance on the same cluster in, an, in any cluster there can be only one default instance uh, so we're going to do a, a named instance 2k8 I'm going to call it i2 for instance name so sql 2 k 8 i2 um, it's a named instance and I'm going to um, give a name for the instance uh, I'm going to call it simply i2 I don't recommend you want to follow your naming conventions for your uh, naming of your virtual server names and instance names but being a test server I'm just going to go with uh, uh, i2 and this is the uh, root directory that is going to use. We don't need to change that. This is where your binaries and is going to create individual folders underneath and uh, going to create all the binaries. Um, but if you are planning to, um, well, on a production machine, you may want to change this because we don't want, um, we ideally uh, recommend not to install uh, SQL Server binaries on the same uh, volume as your system. Uh, uh, disk which is a C drive so if you have a D drive or anything locally not a shared disk but a local disk on uh, each of the nodes um, you want to use that uh, for this instance root directory and then I'm going to click next I love doing this um, uh, remotely because there's no one to stop me interrupt me at any questions I'm just kidding. I, I miss um, people not asking me questions. But yeah, um, you know, once uh, you get this, once you go through this uh, presentation, feel free to uh, um, send uh, emails uh, with your questions uh, via the our uh, NTSS UG, UG forum. Um, I'll try to answer those um, as quickly as I can. All right, so it's now preparing the uh, instance, uh, the network name and the instance name and all that. Just bear with me one more second. Yeah, I need a bigger, better laptop. I have a, this is a 4 gig um, Lenovo um, dual core laptop apparently that's not enough. Anyway, so it did the disk space requirement check uh, for drive C and um, uh, everything seems to be uh, look uh, good there. So it's a green check so we don't have any space issues on C drive which is good. So I clicked on next and it's now going to the cluster resource group as you can see here on the left hand pane so the next window is going to come is cluster resource group selection so we need to select the the, the resource group that we are going to install um, this SQL Server instance. Okay so this is a cluster resource group. As you see here there's only one um, so these are all the groups basically these are all the groups available in this cluster um, as you see here only one showing up as red uh, I mean uh, green so this is the only one we can use to install this cluster why this other one SQL 2k8 i1 you cannot use it because there is already another SQL instance on that uh, cluster group you cannot use that uh, because you don't have any shared storage um, and you don't it's not recommended to use uh, um, install your SQL Server instance in the same cluster group and same thing with the available storage you don't have um, um, storage available and all that so <coughs> Um, so we are going to use this, uh, the SQL 2K I, I, I2. So here it already um, selected that. 
um, actually let me select that yeah so this is the group we are going to use um, previously it is going to, it gave me a suggestion for another name to create a new group but since we already have the group um, uh, created uh, for our SQL instance I'm going to use that which is SQL 2 k i 2 I click uh, I selected that and click on next so now the next one is it's going to go into the cluster disk selection bear with me for one more second or maybe two more okay three more no make it ten All right, there we go. So um, as you see here, um, this is now the cluster disk selection. So it's asking me what disks you're going to select um, for your cluster install. Now here, as you see here, again, there is only one green check. That's because that is the only shared disk available for us. All other disks are already occupied um, with other instances and everything. So we are going to um, use this cluster disk 3 which is already selected here you don't have to do anything here just click on next okay while I'm waiting for that let me um, log back into this node 2 Alright, so here these are the uh, different uh, IP addresses I can use. As you notice here, we have some new options that you normally don't see in a SQL Server 2005 setup. One is IPv6. So now, like, a disc like we discussed before, IPv6 is supported now. So Windows, uh, Windows 2008 supports IPv6 um, and hence uh, SQL supports the IPv6. So you can have um, IPv6 addresses uh, and then DHCP so that's another thing so DHCP is supported though we don't recommend using DHCP for a, a production cluster uh, you want to have a, um, a physical a static IP addresses assigned to each network uh, uh, connection that you are going to use with your cluster but DHCP is um, available and supported um, so right now so everything is selected here um, I'm going to leave this defa defaults, but if you have multiple network connections and uh, you, you can select here which network connection you want the SQL Server to use. Now remember SQL Server is um, multi-homing capable, so SQL Server can listen on multiple IP addresses. So if you want SQL Server to listen on multiple network connections, you can enable, you can check any number of what are the available network connections here so it um, listens on those so right now I have two networks here cluster network 1 and cluster network 2 and I'm going to select all of them so SQL uh, can listen on um, all of those well one thing though so I had to provide here so I don't want to sir, use DHCP so I want to provide my own um, IP address here um, let me make sure that before I do that let me make sure that I don't have an IP already being used yeah it being a test machine I can go with DHCP but I want to show you how to do this so you can do this in your know, production uh, environment so I have 10.10.0.1 is my default gateway so I'm going to see if I have what is my next available um, maybe 20 no it's being used so I don't want to use the same IP that's I want to um, select an IP that's not being used okay test so apparently 10.10.0.21 is not being used 
so I'm going to select that here as my IP so in your case you want to pre-assign you want to pre-allocate you want to work with your network uh, engineers to have them allocate uh, predefined static IP addresses uh, for the virtual IP um, of a cluster so you want to have those available and handy and ready before you actually start before you actually attempt the cluster installation process in my case again be, being a test machine I'm just going with um, uh, as I go along uh, let me check uh, the next one I want to use let's see if I have okay 22 is not in use but the D, uh, let me also check um, actually yeah you know what I'm, I'm actually going to use this IP for the cluster network one right because this is uh, the cluster network 2 is um, another network that I may not want to use it for now so let me disable this so I only I'm going to make oh, you I'm going to use only one IP only one network for this cluster instance and that is this cluster network 1 and this is my static IP so this is how so you have to select here which are the network connection so this will show you all the network connection that are visible to your cluster so you have to select which networks that you want your SQL server to listen on and then you have to provide that IP address the virtual IP address that you want um, your cluster SQL server instance to use um, and then you can the subnet mask and all that is predefined only thing you have to uh, enter is this one and you have to disable this DHCP setting alright so I'm going to click next here now that I've selected the uh, network that I want my SQL server to listen on and the IP that uh, I want to use for my uh, to be able to connect to this uh, server okay so the next one is the security policy so this is what something we discussed before so if you remember in a 2005 cluster install you had to have a domain group created beforehand and provide those domain groups name here uh, before you can continue with the, um, the setup if you don't provide this in 2005 cluster setup you cannot continue you had to provide a domain group but in 2008 this new option service IDs eliminates the need of having these domain groups created so the service sets is a service uh, security identifiers is a new concept in 2008 uh, that SQL Server 2008 um, get benefit from so you don't have to provide the domain groups uh, you provide this uh, uh, the recommended option of use service sets so SQL will create individual internal um, account so if you go into your SQL Server 2008 after this you will see um, individual accounts under security um, that starts with NT service slash SQL Server SQL Server agent so on and so forth so those are the service sets and SQL will use those um, the service accounts use those service sets to be able to grant all the privileges required for the successful um, functioning of your um, services you can um, read more about service sets um, online um, also on MSDN um, alright if you have any questions please do let me know about this and I'll send you some links over alright so I clicked on next alright we're waiting for the next window to open which is the server configuration as you see here in the left okay so we are at the server configuration and this is where you specify um, what accounts you want to use for um, your SQL Server agent and SQL Server service now this you still need to have the domain accounts but you don't need those domain groups um, which will be used to place these domain um, accounts so in 2005 you need to have these uh, domain accounts to run your service and then you need to have those domain groups um, to uh, to be uh, to place these uh, the, um, uh, the accounts in those groups but in uh, 2008 you don't need that you you don't need domain groups 
but you still need just like 2005 you need the actual domain account to run the um, the SQL server setup uh, I'm sorry SQL server service accounts uh, services um, I'm going to um, let me check I should have yeah for now I'm going to use an administrator account well, I'm breaking my own rules here. I don't want you to do this, but it's just a setup, um, you know, test machine. Um, you don't need to have your um, SQL Server services running as a local admin, um, unlike uh, prior to 2005. But starting from 2005, you don't have that uh, necessity of uh, having your service accounts run as um, service accounts as members of local admin. Um, but for now, just for testing, I'm going to use. Um, um, a, a domain, a local admin ac um, administrator account. All right. Uh, let me provide the password here. So you need to provide what the whatever the account you selected here. You need to provide the password for that account. So SQL Server will be able to use that to start these accounts. And as you notice here, the startup type need to be manual because this is a cluster so you don't want your services to um, services console to take over your SQL Server services uh, you need to leave the manual so cluster can handle these services and if you notice here the so the SQL Server agent and database engine you want to have um, domain accounts but for the the full text uh, filter daemon launcher and browser um, you don't need to have a domain account uh, you can um, you can go with the um, the local service accounts. Um, if you want to pro provide a domain account, make sure that you are providing a domain account that is different from what you are using for the SQL Server um, engine and uh, SQL Server agent. Um, and, and for the matter, even here, you want to ideally for security reasons, you want to use a different account for SQL Server service and SQL Server agent. Why? Because of again, you know, you do, the SQL Server agent service doesn't require um, such high privileges. Those are required by your database engine service. So, if by providing a different account, SQL Server will provide only those privileges those are required uh, for the appropriate service uh, for the appropriate account. So, instead of you providing a common account and providing additional privileges to uh, the agent, uh, which are not required. So ideally you want to have one individual account, uh, individual domain account for this SQL Server service and uh, uh, SQL Server agent and um, either you can use the, uh, the, lo the default local service account for these two services or you can provide a different domain account um, for them as well. So this is the, um, the service account window and if you notice the tab here, there is a collation tab this is where you can select the, the SQL Server collation you want to use. Um, um, you know, if you it's a, if it is a typical OLTP machine, and if you don't have any specific uh, um, collation needs, you can go with the um, the default one. But you can also change um, based on your data needs, your collation needs for your application. Um, while we are waiting for that collation tab, let me just log back into this. I'll make a note to uh, disable this um, idle time check um, uh, log off in the future. It's annoying. Alright, so so this is the uh, the collation. If you look on the left hand side of the uh, window, uh, so you see here the SQL Latin general. Um, that is the um, the uh, default. So if you want, you can customize by clicking on the customize button. But for now, we are going to go with um, the default. So click next. Bear with me for one more second. The server is slower than me. All right, so this is where now we are the database engine configuration window. 
so this is where we specify what authentication mode you know these are already windows authentication or mixed mode another thing here is you want to specify the SQL Server administrator that you want. This is again um, something new in SQL Server 2008. So you need to provide at least one account um, that is uh, that you want to be a member of sysadmin uh, role. Um, this is to prevent any problems like you know not being able to log on to the server later time, um, uh, things like that. So you need to provide. Um, one account that you can because you know um, otherwise local admin uh, the built-in local admin is the only way you can get into the server as this admin and if you remove that you will be uh, in trouble so that's why you want to add an, uh, an account so you can also say add current user so it adds the user that you are right now using to install to run the setup, what are the account you log currently logged into this node you can use that as a um, sysadmin account um, so, but at least one need to be there, otherwise you'll not be able to continue with your um, setup. So you can either add another, another account or you can say add current user. And uh, then you go to, if, um, so that's that's about here. If, if you use mixed mode, uh, you need to also provide this SA password. Um, but if being going with Windows authentication, you don't need to provide that um, because it's purely Windows um, logins. Uh, I'm clicking on the data directory tab and this is another welcoming change in 2008. Um, let's open the window. I'll show you what I mean in a bit. All right. As you notice here, you have multiple folders. If you, if you remember in 2005, SQL Server 2005, you, you can only select one folder to install your data files. Uh, and then you had to add any remaining ones um, to the uh, at a later time after f finishing the setup. But what we recommend is to um, have multiple f data files. You don't want to put everything into one data, one disk volume. You want to pr put your data files separately, your tempdb data files separately, your log files, your system databases separate from your user databases. So these are all the best practices, right? So but we did not provide those um, in 2005 we just provided you one option to provide one folder and then you later go and make uh, manually make changes so in 2008 you we have this option now to individually select what folder what volume what uh, disk drive you want to use for user databases and um, um, what folder you want to use for your uh, user database logs for your tempdb or tempdb log and even for your backups and of course your system databases which goes into you know the data root directory so all these you can select and you can individually um, select so if you have multiple disks um, multiple shared disks under your uh, cluster group you can select all those so you can click on this uh, browse button and you can select all those and you can create those folders you want those data files to be placed everything you can do from here so the setup will automatically create all those uh, resources and uh, um, place uh, appropriate files into appropriate folders instead of you going and manually doing all that cool right so but for now here uh, since I have only one disk volume I'm going to use that one for all these but you can change that um, the file stream, um, so this is a new um, feature in 2008, the file stream option to uh, provide um, um, uh, a place for your uh, large objects uh, to um, enable the support for the large objects and to improve the performance with accessing your large objects, uh, which is uh, um, for, a dif um, for a different time, a topic for a different time. Um, you can also read about this file stream. But for now I'm going to, um, um, I don't have any I'm not planning to have any large objects, so I'm going to um, leave that alone. So I'm not specifying anything with the file stream. So I am now going to click next. So now it's going to configure those folders and uh, uh, place appropriate uh, uh, files into that. Alright, so the next one, the the very um, familiar one, you may know this, so if you want to uh, send error reports to Microsoft when there an error occurs, uh, you can enable this, 
and you want to um, uh, send the, your f feature usage information to Microsoft uh, so we can improve our features and uh, products you can uh, um, enable that so I recommend you to enable this so we know what uh, you're doing uh, just kidding I mean yeah it's good to uh, no personal information will be sent uh, um, with those uh, options only purely technical and error information all that alright so this is the next check the the, the third check in the um, the overall so this is even so this is something new um, and this happens in the cluster installation rule so because we are installing in cluster it is going to check to make sure that you know, everything is uh, set up and ready for the cluster so you don't have any problems um, um, during the running the setup so everything is passed here some of these are not applicable like the file stream uh, uh, patch and all that there's only for 2003 yeah this is another thing so window if you are installing SQL Server 2008 on Windows Server 2003 please make sure that you install this file stream hotfix check you can check for online um, uh, MSDN uh, for the uh, or the knowledge base um, uh, Microsoft knowledge base for this uh, appropriate patch number and everything but you need to have this because if you don't have that if you don't install pr beforehand after you come all the way up to here it will fail saying you don't have that patch no only way you can do that is to cancel everything go back and install the patch and start it all over again so to avoid that as a prerequisite uh, when you're installing 2008 only on Windows Server 2003 Windows Server 2008 uh, it's it's already built in so you don't need to worry about but Windows Server 2003 you need to make sure that you're installing this hot, page, hot fix check otherwise it will not even if you're not using file stream for that matter so even if you don't select file stream as part of the, your installation options you need to have this file stream um, hotfix installed before you start the uh, setup process alright so I'm going to click next on this okay so this is the summary page where it is showing everything that we have selected you can uh, uh, cross check to make sure that you did not make any mistakes if you do then you can click on back and go to the appropriate window and then this is the final uh, window and once everything is good and click on install and cross your fingers to <laughs> um, um, hoping that uh, the installation is going to be successful I mean like I had so m I did so many of these installations uh, so many SQL Server 2005 and SQL Server 2008 I haven't not even one yeah in 2008 uh, cluster I haven't come across any set of failures um, at all but in 2005 I had so many um, that I had to troubleshoot uh, there's so many set of failures so all you know mostly because of those unattended installation in 2005 most of the time that's where we see the failures and uh, in some other place cases like you know the uh, the setup checks like the cluster checks and those things are not there so at some point uh, um, the setup decides oops I don't have so something so it fails on you then you have to uh, do the appropriate thing and then rerun the setup so there are so many two th um, 2005 installation that I had some troubles with that I had to help customers with the troubleshooting um, but 2008 so far I haven't had any um, setup failures yet alright so this is going to take a while so this installation is going to um, continue and uh, uh, and then we can come back so while we are waiting for this let's go back to our slide deck and let's look at the other options okay so the one we're going where we are doing now is integrated install the next um, type of install available which is rarely used this is this is mostly useful when you have number of um, nodes like you know mostly you have, typically you have two three or four node but if you are going up to like 16 is the uh, maximum number of nodes uh, uh, supported in a SQL Server 2008 cluster so if you're going that high if you're going to multiple number of nodes and uh, even not only that if you are installing multiple clusters at the same time and you want to use some aut unattended or automated installation procedures then this option is more useful because uh, you know in that case this prepare phase 
So the prepare is the first phase you will run um, where you will run the setup on each of the nodes and run the prepare option so the setup will just dump the the appropriate binaries and uh, configure appropriate folders uh, just preparing uh, for the uh, cluster so you can if you are installing on multiple nodes you can use some uh, some kind of whatever the tool you use for installation you can use that tool to uh, remotely send these setup files during the prepare phase um, and instead of you running manually on each node. So that's the advantage of using this uh, um, advanced cluster install. Um, but otherwise for the most, of, I haven't frankly, yeah, most all, every, each and every cluster install I did was um, set up uh, the, the first way, the integrated install. The prepare phase, this, phase, uh, this uh, uh, install I only used for testing purposes but never for actual cluster install. So after the prepare phase is done, phase is done, either manually or using certain automated tools. So you you push all the binaries onto all the nodes, and then this complete phase, the phase two, is something that you need to do manually only once. So once all the preparation phase is done, um, and again the cluster SQL will not be available um, accessible after the prepare phase, but you run the complete phase. At which point uh, SQL is going to tie all those um, nodes together as one cluster, um, and then um, then present you that cluster so you can access that cluster. So the complete phase is something you need to run manually only once once the prepare phase is done. Well, um, and also if you are adding more nodes later time so let's say you install a three node cluster um, so using this uh, setup process so you didn't you did prepare and then complete at a, at a later point of time you want to install or add another node you can use that uh, add node feature that we saw before and that I'm going to demonstrate um, as part of the integrated install so you can use that um, to um, add um, any nodes uh, rem uh, more nodes to this cluster so basically this is how it happens so you have let's say you have a um, four node cluster um, so you are going to uh, prepare it first and each time on each node when you are preparing make sure that you are using the same instance ID and instance name on all nodes um, so during the completion phase SQL knows that it needs to tie them all together so you use the same instance ID and same instance name and then you do the complete uh, um, the phase two where it is going to tie them all together and uh, present you the four node cluster so that's the uh, the advanced option now I'm sure our setup is still running uh, yes I can as you can see there it's doing the install SQL engine action so let me go back and uh, while we're waiting for that install let me go with the other step other slides here so for uninstalling a cluster um, you the same way as you install you had to run setup on each uh, um, failure cluster node and this is irrespective of you used uh, um, installation um, which option is it integrated install or uh, um, the advanced install um, irrespective of what you used to in install your cluster you had to run setup on each node and use the remove node option which is available as part of the setup and once all the nodes are removed your SQL Server failure cluster is removed so after this only the SQL Server part is done but if you want to also remove the nodes from the actual Windows cluster you want to um, follow the evict node and all that procedure from the cluster the next one and very important one that I want to talk about is a rolling upgrade so this is another thing that's very useful um, and I think we discussed during the last session as well so you now have the option to install um, do the rolling upgrade even for SQL Server patches and SQL Server service packs which was not possible before you had to have your SQL Server um, you had to install the patch SQL Server related patch or service pack you had to install only from the active node but here now you have the rolling upgrade and let's talk about that so in a rolling upgrade it's a process of you upgrading the passive node of a cluster and then um, fail over the unupgraded instance to the upgraded node and then upgrading the remaining nodes so you you start patching all the passive nodes and at the end, end of end, end you fail out your SQL Server instance and that's the only 
time you'll have a downtime. I'll show you um, um, uh, a slide, um, a graphic that's going to be more uh, um, idea on this. Um, so let let's get to that first. I'll send you this slide so you can uh, read through this. I don't have to read through. So okay, so this is a, a typical customer scenario. Let's say you have a two node, one instance SQL Server um, cluster. Uh, what did I say? Is the, this is actually 2008. Sorry about that. Uh, I mentioned there. Um, actually, I'm sorry. This is for uh, upgrading an existing SQL Server 2005. So the same thing, the rolling upgrade feature um, of SQL Server 2008 can also be used to upgrade your existing SQL Server cluster to SQL Server 2008. So this is a typical installation I have here, a Windows Server 2003 with a SQL Server 2005. So what I'm going to do here is, I'll first install all the prerequisites so before you start the install, there are certain prerequisites like the .NET framework, Windows installer, and that uh, file stream um, uh, patch I mentioned about if it is a 2003. Um, so all those you, you want to install and then do a reboot. Um, so after installing the prerequisites, so you don't have to, um, the, see, the setup, each of these setups will prompt you to reboot every time, but you don't need to do that. So first, um, ignore the, all the reboot messages, install all these uh, um, prerequisites, then do once one reboot, alright? But as you notice here, so all along you don't have any downtime because your SQL is on, running on this act. This is your active node. The first node is active node where your SQL is still running and you're able to access. You just install the prerequisites and rebooted the passive node. Um, so no no downtime, and then you do a failover. So you do a failover. Uh, at which point you'll have a short downtime while well, during the failover. So right now your second node is an active and first node is a passive. You follow the same procedure of installing all the prerequisites and reboots just like you did for the uh, second node. And then after the reboot is done, um, so you um, so you still have the connectivity, so you now have the connectivity to your um, uh, the second node which is active now. So you start the upgrade process on the passive node. So you run the SQL Server 2008 setup and you have an upgrade um, option there. So you select that, uh, I'll show you that part of the demo. So you'll run the upgrade process to install SQL Server 2008 um, on the passive node. All right. Um, once that is uh, done, so again you notice there is no downtime. There was one downtime when you failed over, but that's the only one. Um, so, uh, so right now, so once you, as soon as you install the uh, the um, upgrade this to 2008, um, that node will be removed from the cluster group possible owners automatically, so that you don't have any failover. Um, which causes, uh, you know, because you have now have a mismatch. You have a 2005 node on one, uh, 2005 on one node, and 2008 on another node. So to avoid any problems, it uh, removes it from the uh, possible owners, which means you cannot fail over to that node um, if there is any problem on the second node. Um, so at that end of that, so you now have a full SQL Server 2008 installed on the first node, which is a passive node now, and then you run this uh, upgrade on the active node. Now that's when your uh, actual downtime starts. So with the, during this uh, process of that upgrade, running the upgrade on the second node, the, um, the SQL Server instance will be automatically failed over. You c either, you know, this step four and step five can be interchangeable. So you can, you can manually fail over first and then start the upgrade process on the uh, passive node as you did on the first node or you can let the SQL Server setup do that failover for you. It doesn't matter the, how you do it but if you want to have more control over your failover process and all that I would say you want to do it manually so do the step 5 first and then go to step 4 but irrespective of that uh, what happens is when you do this failover SQL Server instance uh, SQL Server detects that you're now 
failing over to an upgraded node. So all the instance specific, you know, the system database upgrade, everything happens during this failover. So during that time, so this failover is going to take a little longer than uh, um, uh, usual failover because it has to go to databases, your user databases, all those. So those will be now 2008 ready. And, uh, and, uh, and this is a one-way process. So once you do the failover, you cannot move back because your upgrade, your system database and everything is upgraded to 2008. So you cannot go back. So you want to make sure that you're doing it uh, um, just bef when you ex ex actually want to do that okay so <clears throat> so once that is done there is no client collection during about you know one to two minutes during that upgrade process uh, during the failover and the upgrade process once that is done you can now now this first node is back to active and the second node is passive so excuse me so you can now um, uh, connect your clients can now connect to that new SQL Server 2008 um, uh, instance on the active node, and then you can start upgrading the passive node, which is the second node now. So you can start uh, upgrading that. So at the end of that, you will have um, a full SQL Server 2008 two node cluster. So as you notice here, um, there are two short brief downtimes during the entire process one during the um, the first failover to install the prerequisites and two when actually um, failing over to do the um, upgrade of the um, uh, the second node so there are two brief uh, downtimes as opposed to uh, 2005 where you had to install um, 2005 on the active node and there will be more downtime while um, SQL Server will be brought down uh, as part of the um, upgrade process. But here the rolling upgrade helps you minimize the downtime during the uh, cluster upgrade. And uh, if you have a database mirroring already for your 2005 uh, cluster, um, um, you can use that for your uh, advantage as well where you can uh, point all your connections to the mirrored SQL, install, upgrade your um, cluster and then so this is a process. Step one, upgrade your um, mirror instance to 2008 then point all your um, connections to that and then do a manual failover um, yeah so the manual failover to the database mirroring partner so all the um, um, connections will be using that mirror database and then um, and then do the um, upgrade of the cluster, um, you know, just the, the same way as before. But there is no downtime now because you already your your connections are now from uh, the uh, database mirror. mirror. Uh, so at the end of that, you have a full 2008 two node cluster, and then the mirroring can be resumed back. And then you can do a, a failover, a manual failover of the database mirroring. So now um, you're back to um, where you were except now you have a 2008 cluster as opposed to a 2005 cluster. So that is possible, cluster upgrade. Um, these are some of the post install configuration. Before we go to that, let's see if this uh, is done. Oh, so it looks like I'm um, timed out again. Okay. Okay, still running as expected. This will take a while. So while that is going, let's go back here. So these are some of the post installation um, uh, configuration uh, uh, set of options. So verify that all SQL Server resources are um, all SQL Server resources are uh, independence are created properly. Um, verify the cluster group failover. Make sure that you fail over, fail back to make sure that the failover is successful. Um, add uh, any additional cluster disks. If you want to add more disks, you can add those, like m more uh, data volumes, more log volumes, and things like that, in addition to what you have selected during the setup. And then install any um, client tools or any other um, um, components. And uh, if you want to modify the localize, ease alize, or any re restart, um, restart uh, uh, attempts and things like that, you can do all those as part of the post install. So 
verify the dependencies. This is very important during the post install. Make sure that the dependencies set up correct. So your SQL Server resource, um, your SQL Server agent should depend on SQL Server resource, and then um, this should have an end dependency on disk resources and network name resources. By end dependency means both of these network resource and disk resource should be online before your SQL Server resource can come online. And your SQL Server resource should be online before your agent resource can come online. So all these dependencies make sure that you have all the disk resources you configured um, as dependencies uh, for the SQL Server resource. Um, and anything that's not critical, for example, a backup disk, you may not want, you know, if you don't think it's critical for your um, SQL Server application, you may not need to have that as a, a dependency, uh, um, as a disk resource for the SQL Server resource. So that have all the critical resources are dependencies, any non-critical resources are non-dependencies. Here is a sample how the dependency uh, chart looks. Um, this is another cool feature in 2008, so you can now see the graphical way of all the dependencies uh, between re, um, resources. All right. Um, so these are some of the uh, post-installation tasks, verifying the connectivity, name resolution, um, verifying the resource group failover, um, and you know you can run these cluster queries to make sure that uh, the the cluster is uh, healthy. Like, you know, if you want to see all the cluster nodes, you can run the SysDMOS cluster nodes. If you want to see all the shared drives, you can run SysDMIO cluster shared drives, so on and so forth. Um, also, look under the Management Studio properties to see the is clustered property is set to yes. Uh, that indicates that it's a clustered in instance. Uh, for a standard instance, this will be no. Uh, and add additional um, shared drives and any service packs and security updates as part of the post installation tasks. You can install the client tools. Um, you know, you can also install using the command line if you any uh, client tools or any additional components you want to add. Or if you want to add a node, you can use that using add node feature. So all these part of the post installation task and uh, antivirus exclusion. So this is part of the best practices. You want to exclude any um, data files. Uh, SQL Server backup folders, full text folders, quorum drive, all these uh, from the antivirus so they won't be scanned by your any um, cluster problems. And uh, enable uh, remote DAC, um, you need to enable this uh, uh, in a cluster, you need to enable remote DAC before you can uh, use this dedicated admin connection to connect to your cluster instance. So make sure that you enable that uh, so that you'll have, uh, you'll be able to troubleshoot in case of problems. Um, and install any updated version of books online and all that. Okay, uh, the next thing is a cluster testing. Uh, you want to test your cluster properly. There are so many tests available. When we go on site helping cl customers with the, uh, the cluster uh, implementation, we go through a series of checks. We do a, um, a lengthy um, um, checklist to make sure that uh, you know, simulate different types of failovers and ensure that the fail success uh, cluster is able to fail over successfully. You know, we do burn-in tests, like you know, multiple times we do. We use certain scripts to um, fail over back and forth hundreds of times at times to make sure that uh, um, each time the cluster is able to successfully fail over. Uh, because just one or two times if you do it, it may be successful, but um, if it is not robust enough, you may have some failures. Uh, fail uh, during failover, so you want to make sure that your your failover is uh, successful every time. So you want to do a burning test and then um, do different types of uh, te the testing. Cluster failover is successful. Um, this is a starting and stopping. I want to show you uh, about rolling upgrades. Uh, these are all best practice. Let me go to. We can get back to these later. Um, hmm. Where are those? I had some slides that shows you rolling upgrade process. Well, we saw the rolling upgrade, but patching. How to do a patching? Um, with the rolling upgrade um, feature. I don't see that here. 
I had some very good slides. Okay, maybe I'm using a wrong slide deck. Is it? Anyway, uh, let me go back to my node here. Uh, setup is still running. Okay, so let me... Okay, we'll get back to the rolling upgrade process. It looks like I have a, um, a different slide deck or older version of the slide deck than I wanted to show you. Um, where were you? Post installation, cluster testing, finding information, adding or removing node. So this is the next one in the list. So adding and removing the node. This is um, the process you need to follow. Adding the node is the process you need to follow. So we are now installing a one node SQL Server install uh, cluster. Um, after that is done, we need to go to the second node, run the setup again, and then at that time, add. You have to. We have to use this add node feature so that we can add an, that node to that existing SQL Server uh, failover cluster. So, so when you're adding node, um, you need to run the cluster validation wizard uh, to verify to make sure that all the tests are passed. Otherwise, you'll not be able to add that node into the cluster. So you'll run the cluster validation wizard. And then you'll install all the prerequisites like the uh, the 4.5, the .NET framework, um, 3.5, and these installer 4.5, the file stream patch, and all that. Um, and then you run the setup. Um, SQL Server 20008. Well, we have a long way to go there. Uh, that's the typo. It's supposed to be 2008. Um, so start SQL Server 2008 setup on the new node, and then click installation and go to the add node feature. I'll show you that as part of the demo. Now, if you want to remove the node, same process, you run the SQL Server 2008 setup and you go to the maintenance ta uh, tab uh, on the left-hand pane and then use the remove node feature. And if you also want to, if you want to destroy the cluster, I don't, I don't know why, but if you want to destroy the cluster, um, you can open the failover cluster management and right-click on, um, uh, right-click select more actions and there's a destroy cluster option there. Okay, uh, let's see we are ready for no it's still running so I think it's for us to uh, go to the best practices window here so dedicated cluster groups um, okay so as you see here so you want to make sure that these are some of the best practices to ensure that you get high availability from your cluster. So you want to make sure that you are using dedicated cluster group for each SQL Server instance. You're not sharing the same, um, of course, you'll not be able to share the same SQL Server instance, um, you know, one instance, uh, um, you know, multiple, um, same group for multiple SQL Server instances. But at the same time, you don't also want to, you don't want to use any other groups that are used for, like, for example, MSDTC or cluster group or any other application um, cluster group. You don't want to use all those. You want to have dedicated cluster groups uh, for each SQL Server instance. And you evaluate resource dependencies, as we discussed before, and evaluate resource policies. So this is the one uh, I showed you before. This is something that you want to make sure that you have properly configured. You have, um, uh, for example, a SQL Server resource being critical. You want if restart is unsuccessful, uh, cause a failover. So things like that. So you want to make sure that you are properly configuring as per your um, failover needs. And then matching nodes, you want to make sure that all the nodes participating in a cluster are exactly identical. Um, of course, the cluster prep report is going to de uh, identify uh, and report if there are any differences between nodes. You also want to make sure that you evaluate those and, ma and make sure that you are uh, installing all the possible um, appropriate drivers on all of the nodes. So make sure that the drivers are identical, the firmware and everything is identical. 
internal network configuration um, so you want to make sure that you have a dedicated uh, um, communication uh, heartbeat uh, communication or um, you know the network that is configured for your internal network uh, uh, communication AV exclusions uh, antivirus exclusion so you configure your antivirus appropriately so um, it will exclude uh, files belonging to cluster for example the cluster folder uh, the shared um, uh, folder, shared drive, uh, quorum uh, drive if you have one configured make sure that you are um, excluding all those from antivirus scanning, uh, scanning because that can cause some uh, unnecessary failovers also identify any and eliminate any single points of failures if you have any for example um, disk so you want to have multiple HPA so if uh, one HPA fails you still have uh, 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 redundancy there so node placement it is important so you want to make sure that the nodes are physically placed away from each other so any kind of uh, problems uh, uh, um, physical external factors that are causing problems with it with, with the no one node are not causing to the other node so you have uh, good failover um, good uh, cluster failover um, there uh, third party applications make sure that you don't have any third party applications configured um, and if you do make sure that they are properly supported supported uh, because if in case of problems with those third party applications third party vendor is the one that needs to uh, help you with those not Microsoft so make sure uh, that you have um, those are taken care of alright so we are uh, done with the best practices let's go take a look with um, okay the next one is the troubleshooting so um, okay before we go there let's take a look so we have um, our cluster is done um, cluster installation is done um, okay it is successful you can click on the link to get a summary but uh, it's looking good so we now have um, a cluster a one node cluster rather we just installed one node cluster as we see here we see the uh, cluster resources and um, and that's it that's the end of the uh, cluster installation so we'll uh, talk about adding node in the next phase.